Want one? Huh? You drink beer, don't you? What do you think? I think you look thirsty. Got your moving boxes, Lieutenant. You should be out looking for the mad woman who killed my son. Look, as soon as we find Justine's body, sir, I'll let you know. If you find it. You know something? I'm really busy right now because I've got a captain in there that's breathing down my neck to make this department more officer efficient. There has been nothing efficient about this investigation since moment one. All you've done so far is bedevil my wife. Sir, if you've got a complaint, I suggest you take it in there to Captain Rulebook, okay? They're pretty chummy, don't they? Don't worry, Grant. We're gonna find your brother's killer. I have faith in you, Gabe. I know you do. And I will not let you down. service above and beyond the call of duty. Yep. We can come forward, but I'm not so sure that's such a good idea. Hmm. There's a shirt again, you know? I swear he's, he's wearing this in just about every picture of us. Look at that. Cuffs almost. Almost has a fringe. It's so worn. I, I put it in the bottom of this bag I was taking to a thrift shop one day, but... Of course, he dug it out of the bottom. The game. I gave him this shirt, you know, when he uh, when he made lieutenant. I didn't mean he had to wear it every other day, for heaven's sakes. So I, I ordered him another one from that uh, oh, that New England catalog company. But um, well, they were back ordered, so uh, should be arriving any day now. So where's Donna? Hero by his. Why did you leave me, you son of a bitch? I'm alone. Don't you know anything? Not alone. Going in in your jeans? No. You're not going to swim in your underwear. No. Nick? Now you just think how great the water will feel. Get your bare skin. I'm through playing games. Ball's in your court.
Rachel. Oh, my God. Oh, Rachel, I'm so sorry. It's just you were pointing that thing. I know. I, I, I'm sorry myself. I didn't mean to sneak up on you. Or I understand, I... Pauline. It's all right. <sighs> Whose gun is that? Carl's. Well, what are you doing with it? What's going on here? The police found the weapon that killed Ryan, and it had my prints on it. Why, well, that's impossible. That's what Carl said. Well, there's no way, Rachel. Why did it have my prints on it? Maybe you have the same prints as Justine. No one has the same alike. fingerprints, not even twins. You still can't remember anything about that night? I only remember trying to keep up with Justine, and then it's all a blank. Rachel, that's self-preservation. You are saving yourself from remembering something too horrible. Yes. And what was it that I don't want to remember that was so horrible? No, no, it is a mistake. You would not shoot Ryan. You wouldn't shoot anybody. Oh, I have killed someone. And if Justine walked in here now and threatened me or anyone in this family, I would kill her. You think it, but actually doing it, I don't think so. Is that what happened that night? Was I trying to save myself or was I trying to stop her? Is that what happened? And then, and then Ryan? Ryan got in the way. God, why can't I remember? Did I kill Ryan? Why do you have to be such a hero, you know? Why, why did he have to go around saving everybody? Hmm? He saved you. I was there. Ryan was not going to stop until he brought you back to all the people that loved you. And I, I definitely say that that was a life worth it. Yeah, but the point is that he's not living it, you know? He's gone and I'm no, here no, and no, I'm no, never no, going to be I, in his I, arms I again. How could he do that to me? I don't know, Vic. What do you want him to do, huh? Did you want to keep Ryan, of all people, stuck in this little room with you so he couldn't go outside and nothing awful would happen to him? Is that what you wanted? Jake, the whole time we were together, you know, he would tell me not to worry so much. I called it, didn't I? Didn't I? Ryan wanted to be with you for eternity, Vicky. It just didn't work out that way. Yeah, well then why did I buy that damn bed? You know, extra long so his feet wouldn't hang over. I just wanted him to need me so much that he would never leave me. Sometimes, sometimes, I would keep him up all night making love to me, Jake. Oh. No, no, come on, come on, come on. I can tell you this, right? Yeah. And you know why I do it? Ah. Uh. I did it to, just to keep the morning from coming, you know, because that's the time that he'd go away from me. And I would feel like a worm, you know, when he'd have to go to work on two hours of sleep, but then he'd stand in that doorway. And he would look at me and he'd say, you see this face? It's the face of the happiest guy in the whole world. And he'd turn around and walk out the door, and I would feel so alone, and like I couldn't breathe. Come on, why do you think I have 200 pairs of shoes in my closet? I'd call Donna, we'd go shopping, I'd stick my nose into other people's business where it didn't belong anything to keep from seeing him standing in that doorway, saying goodbye. But every time he did, it was like the last time I'd ever seen him. See, I always knew that he would leave me like this. He didn't. He didn't leave you, Vicky. I mean, he's always going to be right there. Oh, come on. Come on. Don't you, of all people, give me that line of bull about how I'm always going to have him with me. You know, we didn't make it to the altar. And we're not going to be having any kids together. And I'm going to be sitting on the front porch of some nursing home alone when the time comes. So don't give me some sentimental load about how I'm always going to have him with me. You know, the bottom line is I fell in love with a guy who just didn't stick around to see it through to the end, you know? To tell you the truth, I, I'm sort of thinking what was the point, you know? Thanks for nothing, by the way. He rescued me so that I could wake up in the middle of the night calling out his name. And so that I could sit here and tell Stephen, sorry, but um, Ryan's just not going to be your uh, your stepdaddy anymore, and Kirkland oh. isn't even going to remember Listen, him. Vicky, all I'm trying to say is that it's, it's just going to take some time for you to figure out where you're, where you're going to go from I don't want to go anywhere from here. I'm, I'm going to be there for you, all right? 
I mean, everyone who loves you is going to be there for you tomorrow. Sorry, but if you're talking about um, Ryan Harrison's funeral, I'm not going. No way I'm going to sit in some church. Sob my eyes out while everyone sits around and says what a great guy he was. Yeah. They can just lower him to the ground without me, because... So who's winning, or shouldn't I ask? I am. You always win when we play cards, don't you, Lou? Right. <laughs> she feeling better? Yeah, her fever's gone. She's still a little tired, though. Yeah. But hey, Dr. Ames gave you a little plenty of medicine to make the pain go away, didn't he? Right. Well, would you like a little iced tea? Hmm? Yeah. Big girl glass? Right there. It's a good thing you sent Greg here over to his friend's house, because I'm telling you, these ear infections are so oh, contagious. Yeah, I know. Well, Henry's mother set up a tent in the living room for the kids. Oh, well, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Thank you. Boy. You know, Gregory and I spent a night out under the stars in Oklahoma. Mm. He's a real little outdoorsman. Living on a farm makes you love nature. Either that or you hate it. Obviously, I know where my heart is. You know, I think John, I really think he could stand a, a shorter commute to the hospital now, chief of staff, all that. John knows how much the farm means to you, Charlene. Yeah. I hooked myself a good one. No two ways about that. Are you okay tonight? Hmm? Oh, yeah. You can tell? Were you disappointed that you missed out on the picnic at the lake with Maggie? Yeah, I just... I just wish she would have came to the hospital with us, you know? She didn't? No, she... She decided to go to the beach alone. Mm. I just hope she calls me when she gets back because I want her to take her to that new place on Route 20. Oh, yeah, I hear they have the guy playing the piano. Yep. And there's dancing in the back. Mm. Salsa. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Hey, you know what? And I can afford it. Well, then it's settled. You're going. But I can't. Louisa, I'm not going to... Louisa, I'll take care of Louisa. Go on, put on a nice shirt, go. It's getting very really? dark out. Your girl's going to be calling. Oh. Oh. I'll be back, okay, baby? Come here. Oh. Come here. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. We'll be fun. Hey, she'll love seeing that smile. Beautiful. Want another one? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not really a big beer drinker. Mm. Too fattening. <laughs> Seriously, would you want me to be fat? I'm thinking about it. Rachel's so mad at me. I mean, Tomas stayed over the other night and we got caught and if I don't get her car home, she's gonna kill me. I'll take you home. What, your bike? It's acting up anyway. I'll come back in the morning and get it. Maggie, this isn't another game, is it? I'm not scared of anyone. 
Tell me about this McNamee character. It's McNamara. Captain Gabe McNamara. Gabe? Well, as in Gabriel? Oh. Ambitious parents with great aspirations for their son. But I don't see any wings, do you? No, I can't say I do. Fill me in on him. I know he's from Boston, which I guess I'm kind of neutral about. Yes, I'm not. That's the city where I first met Josie. You know what he did? He comes waltzing in this place, sits behind Ryan's desk, in Ryan's chair, expecting all of us to give him the same kind of respect that we gave Ryan. All the while treating us all like children. I couldn't shine Ryan's shoes. Ryan had a big heart, didn't he? Yeah. He was able to suspend his judgment for long enough to even include his renegade father. You meant a whole lot to him, I know that. Yes. Yeah. I think I, I finally did. You see, deep down, Ryan was devoted to helping people. Even after death. Did you know he was an organ donor? I got a call from the hospital this morning. They tell me that Ryan's corneas will see again through the eyes of some other young man. Yes. Ryan was a protector of human life. And I've been, I've been trying to live up to that example. Lieutenant. These accusations against my wife, they have to stop. Mr. Hutchins, please. Look, look, please. If you'd found my fingerprints on the gun, well, of course, you'd be quite justified in questioning me more, in locking me up right away on the spot, because I am far more likely to try and kill Justine than Rachel. But you, Rachel you're would... You're preaching to a converted man. You see, you don't know. I beg your pardon? I say I'm with you. And I've been trying to convince him that he's barking up the wrong tree. Rachel could never pull that trigger. Exactly. Not in that situation. I mean, if you were to threaten her family, if, well, yeah, she would then turn into a ferocious enemy. But to premeditatedly pick up a gun, take aim, and shoot to kill. No. No, not Rachel. Justine Kirkland shot my son. That's your killer. Look. I tell you, she's out there, Sinclair. I mean, work it out for yourself, man. Look. A gun is found on the railroad tracks, near the crime scene. The weapon is pristine, and the only prints that are found on it belong to who? Rachel Corey Hutchins. Now ask yourself the question. How likely is that? Now I'll tell you what happened. Justine Kirkland, in cold blood, shot and killed the son she despised. My son. And she wiped the gun clean, placed it in Rachel's hands, and then she escaped. She has escaped. I can't shake off the feeling. The truth is somehow staring me in the face. But somehow I'm not seeing it. What's missing, son? What's missing? I couldn't believe it when I got the call to investigate Ryan's shooting. I thought, the Ryan Harrison? That little tag-along kid who used to drive me and his older brother nuts. I am so sorry, Grant. I know this must be tearing you up inside. Holding it together. But look at me, I really I should go home and shower and shave. Only there's... Uh... Nobody there to go home to. Where's your dad? Spencer was always an ace in my book. One of the most generous guys in Beantown. Yeah, he reached into his pocket for me more times than I can remember. Spencer had a stroke and he's in a rehab center. I'm sorry. Boy, I talk about being tested. My God, I haven't told him yet. How am I gonna do that game? Uh, if you want me to be there with you, anything you want, just ask. God, it's really you, Gabe. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 it's me. Yeah. Well, it seems like no time at all, huh? Strange how that happens. I mean, you don't see a person for years, you practically forget they're alive, and then all of a sudden, wham, they're standing in front of you. And it's like, it's like we're back in school looking for the answers to that psych quiz. Yeah, well, I was the one who needed the answers. No. You no. were a... Way ahead of me with your straight A's, and you led that basketball team to glory. To hey, more yeah, you. right, with the help of a great forward. Oh, come on, you were the star. I was never a United States senator. <sighs> well, you've had a rough year, my friend. I just haven't had a chance to recover from this, you see. I, Amanda divorced me, I lost the Senate seat, now my mother and Ryan. Go on. You, uh... You had a kid, right? A boy? Yeah. Kirkland. Huh. Kirkland is a beautiful boy. His, uh, his mother has him, and I, I get to see him as often as I can. Mm. Kirkland. That was your mother's maiden name, right? You remember that? Yeah. Some people collect antiques. I collect facts. When I left the law firm, I parlayed that small skill into a career. Yeah. Looking at the top of the line in law enforcement, Grant. Oh, I'm still a star. If anybody can catch your brother's killer, I can. You know, when you and Pauline thought I was dead, you were a pallbearer. You scattered my ashes at the playground in Lasseter. I don't know why you're bringing that up different. You ended up walking through my door anyway, so the whole thing was a farce. What helped you? Helped you deal with the loss. That's what, what funerals are all. You know, if you want, I could help you scatter Ryan's ashes, but then Knock again, you are it burying off, the guy. No, right? Knock it off! You, you, you and I could have our own little private ceremony if you want. I don't want anything. Well, I we, don't could, want we could sit down, we could read some of Ryan's letters, we could light some candles, play some of his yeah, favorite music. why are you music. doing this to me? You're gonna have to say goodbye somehow. You've been listening to me. I'm listening to you. What? What do you want me to say? I'm listening. I said goodbye already. I told you that. I said goodbye every time you no. put that badge Sweetheart, on and walked on the it's door. It's different because I this said goodbye time, him a it's different times. because this over time, over he's not again. coming back. Don't you ever say that. Ryan's not coming back through that no, door. Just, yeah. Just give me the reason that no, Ryan is not no, coming no, back. No, 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 he's dead. not. No, he's Ryan. not. No, he's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. No. Captain McNamara, I was wondering. Oh, you're here. How oh, is this? Uh, is it official? No, no, Gabin. Captain McNamara and I are old friends. We're just having a little reunion under very sad circumstances. Yes, and I interrupted. I do apologize. I've been a bit preoccupied myself of late. So you two know each other from what? From your political days in no, Chicago? No, we were at school together. School? Ah, school days. What, frat rats? Drinking buddies? We went to high school together. Law school. We go back a long way. All the way back to milk and cookies. Oh. Oh, childhood friends. Well, that's different than you. You knew my son. Sure. Yeah, Ryan was a good kid. You might have mentioned that earlier this morning at the house, Captain. I drew a big fat line between my personal life and my work, Mr. Hutchins. I don't step over it. No disrespect intended to you or your family. Well, you see, I never had the privilege of knowing Ryan as a child. Did you, did you play together? Uh, well, we made him fetch the ball, mostly. Uh, we were older. We were tough on him, I guess. Typical kids. But if I ever said anything bad about Grant, Ryan would come at me with fists flying. Uh, he was a great kid, sir. I'm sorry that I will never get the chance to work with him. 
Or perhaps you could channel your sorrow into reinvigorating the investigation into my son's death. You know, I was quite dismayed to find Lieutenant Sinclair wandering around with empty cardboard boxes when, when there are more important matters that he could devote his time to. Oh, such as? Such as find Justine Kirkland, the woman who killed my son. Now look here. If you think I am simply a fond old man whose brains are addled with grief, you could not be more wrong. Sir, we are looking for Justine. Oh, no, you're not. You are looking for a dead body, and I tell you, as the man who knows her true nature better than anyone. The cur is alive. No. Don't say anything, Brown. Don't say anything. She has you under a spell, and you were the last person in the world to assist in her capture. For God's sake, man. No, for Ryan's sake, Grant. For Ryan's sake. You listen to me. Listen to me, all of you. In your crisp blue uniform and your bright, shiny badges with your files to file and your summonses to summon. Justine Kirkland murdered my son. She tried to kill my wife in Switzerland and now she is attempting to frame my wife for the murder of my son. I mean, she framed Rachel. How could she do that? She, Mrs. Hutchins and France were the only ones on that gun. Well, Rachel could never have you're right. She couldn't. Have she that. couldn't. Of course she couldn't. And I tell you, Justine is alive now. If you want to, if you want to launch your new captaincy with a little glory and a little publicity, that's what you people like, isn't it? Then I suggest you put out an APB immediately. Now time is of the essence here. She is vulnerable right now, and she has most probably been injured. Mr. Hutchins, she was hit by a speeding train. Think of it this way: Justine is not mortal. Her rules are not the rules of nature. She operates outside the boundaries. Now find her, drag her to justice, then burn her. Mr. Hutchins, the Bay City PD is investigating all possibilities. We have several promising leads. I promise you, we will find your son's killer. I swear to you, on my father's grave. Hey, babe. Glad to see me. Quit work in the room, Ruby. You love it, don't you? <laughs> You're mine, you know that, right? Nick? It's okay. Nick? I got... I cannot get caught up on probation. Whoa. Hold on. You're about to find out what real speed is all about. One last thought, you cannot afford to ignore my warning. I'm not ignoring you, Mr. Hutchins. You just need to leave this job to the professionals. Daddy, I've been a professional all my life. Only I've been on the other side. What's the matter with him? He's got to call his father. Oh, yeah. About Ryan. Yes, well, when you talk to him, extend my condolences. Ryan would have wanted that. Sinclair, where's the forensic report from the crime scene? I'm sorry, Captain. The daily updates, why aren't they on my desk? Um, I'm sure they're going to be here. Wrong answer. Minute. They are on my desk by 1900 hours daily. Understood? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll will you pass get the that? word out. You do that, Lieutenant. You pass that information around. You see, I got a gut feeling that the information I need to nail Ryan's killer is in that report. not shoot Ryan. It never happened. You just keep telling yourself that. I'm trying. There. Better? 
<laughs> you were so tight. Hey, you know, I'm going to go over to see Vicky. You still want to come with me? I can't go over there. She needs us, Rachel. I mean, I know after what happened with Jay thinking he was dead, I know how much she needs her family. How now. can I even look her in the eye? Will you get over this? You didn't do it. How can you and Carl be so sure? Because we know you, Rachel. No one ever knows anyone that well, Paulina. You and Carl didn't even know it wasn't me here when Justine was here, did you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, honey. That wasn't fair. Trust me, Rachel, we are all very glad that you are back. And it's understandable that you are going to be angry for a long time after what Justine did to you. But you don't have to apologize for it. Come on, give yourself a break. It's difficult to do under the circumstances. After all the faith you've had in me, you can't let me give you back just a little. Look, you can't avoid Vicky forever. Funerals tomorrow, and Stephen is your grandson. So come on, let's do what families do best. Let's get each other through this. Let me uh, wash up, okay? Okay, I'll get the, the door. Yes? I'm sorry to bother you. Oh, no. What is it now? Well, Mrs. Hutchins, your car's been involved in a high-speed chase. My car? Yes, ma'am. And we couldn't catch the driver, but if you'd like, I'll go ahead and report the car stolen. No, no, it isn't stolen. Um, please don't do that. Can we just, uh... Can we just pretend this didn't happen? I will take care of it, I promise. Sure, we don't want any more trouble for your family. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much, officer. Rachel, who's got your car? Maggie. I've got to stop her before she kills herself. You know, it's just that sometimes I, I guess I feel like I'm the person who died, you know? I mean, like the person I was, just... I took my last breath when Ryan, Ryan took his last breath. Are you all right? Yeah. This morning when I got up, I went to the medicine chest to get some aspirin. I saw this bottle of sleeping pills that I bought a couple of weeks ago, you know, and I thought, hey, boy, would that be easy. I could just take a bottle of pills, shot of whiskey. You know, I could just check out in the rest of my life, too. But then I decided not to. Two guesses why. Stephen and Kirkland. I figured losing Ryan was enough. They didn't need to lose their mommy, too. So. Are you going to take me to that funeral? You bet. Gonna sit next to me and hold my hand? Don't get up. I just came by to see if there's anything I could do. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You gonna be okay? Yeah. Yeah, what? Why, are you, you gone somewhere? No, I'll stay if you want me to. <clears throat> no, no. Uh, it's okay. You guys, you guys take off. Up tomorrow for the funeral, right? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Talk about giving somebody the cold shoulder. It's not just me. No, no, I believe me. I I I saw. <laughs> so what's going on? Did you guys get in a flight or something? Please. 
Vicky, don't worry about me and Jake. Come on, not tonight. Hey, don't don't go to bed mad. Go on, you can still beat him home. There is no home. At least not for the two of us together. Jake moved his stuff out. So, uh, I guess it's over. That guy loves you like that, and you're just gonna let him walk away? <laughs> we didn't get caught. Oh, God, we came so close. Oh, so close. Those cars were tails for like two miles. We got away with it. I don't even believe it. It's just like Bonnie and Clyde. That's... <laughs> you know, we could have crashed. We could have died. Yeah? We could also have driven to the Pacific. Sold the car, bought a boat, and sailed away. Maybe she just got tired, you know, after the picnic. Went home, conked out. Yeah, maybe. But she didn't pick up when I called. Listen, you haven't seen Nick by any chance, have you? No. It's just because his own dog left the bone underneath the couch. Well, I did see a light going in the barn a little while ago. Nick used to hang out there sometimes, I know that much. Wait, wait. Nick, somebody's coming. Rachel! Hello, Charlene. I heard there? that you were back. I'm sorry, this isn't a social visit. Tomas, I want to see Maggie. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Hutchins. Maggie's not I here. I heard about the car chase. The police told me. The police? Maggie said she was going to the beach with you. My car is parked next to your barn. Tell Maggie I want to talk to her, Tomas. Rachel, the girl is not here. Tomas! Well, all right, I got to give it to you. Maybe you're psychic. Forensic report tells us a whole lot. They know exactly what happened to Justine. Grounds. I wanted to know what I see you at the church. Ryan's funeral. Tomorrow. Ryan? Yes, I know. I know. I know. I know. Helena, oh, you are a fool if you let him go. Let me show you something, all right? See this? We didn't do the Tunnel of Love that day because we thought, ah, oh, no big deal. We'll, we'll just do it another day. You want to know what really bothers me? When I was in the hospital, uh, recovering after Ryan had rescued me, I just, just couldn't let it go, you know, that he was keeping something from me. He, he didn't want me to know that Justine was still out there. He was trying to protect me, as, as usual. Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is that um, the last time I saw Ryan... Oh, strong and beautiful, standing this far away from me. We had a fight. And I let him walk out of that door without telling him I loved him. Just like you just did with Jake. Now, I can't change what happened with Ryan. You, you gotta think long and hard about that guy who just walked out the door. I don't, I don't know. Would I, you just promise me that you'll think about it? You're the best.
never wanted anything this badly before. Nick.